Hi everybody, I hope you're well. In today's video, I'm going to be helping you to see the potential for taking creative photographs like these by training your eye to see visual triggers. So, let's crack on. Over the years, I've been really lucky to have received lots of very kind words about my photographs, in particular for my creative portraits like these. People have very kindly suggested that I must have a very creative mind and a good imagination in order to take photographs like these. And whilst that is really, really lovely to hear, one of the biggest reasons that I can see the potential for photographs like these is that I have trained my eye to look out for visual triggers, which when I see them I automatically know what I can do with my camera to bring out the creative potential of that scene. It's just become instinctive. So whereas some people are naturally more creative than others, you can to a certain extent teach yourself to be more creative by learning and memorizing these visual triggers. Because certainly when it comes to the majority of wedding venues, these visual triggers are everywhere when you start looking for them. So what do I mean by visual triggers? I mean to teach yourself that when you see certain things, and we'll go through some of those in this video, you automatically know what to do with your camera to achieve a creative photograph. You want it to become like a reflex. So a good first example is water. Whether it's a small puddle or a large lake, if I see water, I automatically think reflections. I don't even consciously have to remember that now, it's just instinctive. Water equals reflections, <laughs> that's it. Try to train your brain to remember that whenever you see water, you think reflections. The next trigger is glass. So if you see glass, whether it's a glass tabletop, a picture frame or anything really with a reflective surface, train your brain again to think reflection. And remember, you don't need these areas of water or glass to be large either. Just a tiny surface area of a few inches will be enough to transform a photograph from something nice to something really cool. So glass equals reflections. The same also applies whenever you see a mirror. Now mirrors obviously equals reflections, but also remember to train your eyes to look for the bevels in the corner of mirrors. The bevel is the corner of certain mirrors where the glass is shaped in at an angle. Now by shooting really close to that bevel, you can get really cool multiple reflections like these images. So bevel mirror equals multiple reflections. So hopefully what you start to see with this is that creativity becomes easier when you start to teach yourself to look out for these triggers. And when you see one, you automatically know that there is creative potential there. Harsh light is another example. If you ever see really harsh light, know that when you put your subject into that light, be it your bride or your groom, and then you expose for them, everything else in the composition will go very dark like this. Now this can transform a photograph completely from what the human eye sees. It worked really well with detail shots too, like these. So the trigger here is harsh light equals creative contrast. And we can take that one step further as well. We now know that if we're shooting outside in really harsh light, when we place our subjects facing the light and we expose for them, we know that everything else is going to go massively underexposed. It's gonna go really, really dark, except for anything else in the frame which is also being lit by that harsh light. So as with these examples, the leaves were also lit by the harsh light. And in this example, the crystal which I was shooting shooting through was also being hit by the harsh light. So again, the trigger here is harsh light equals creative contrast. Now, harsh light is often caused by the sun and the sun itself is a trigger as well. For me, the sun equals silhouettes. So whenever I see the sun, especially when it is low in the sky, I automatically now see the potential for a silhouette photograph. Now, as before, when you expose for the sun, everything else in the shot is going to go underexposed. So if you place your camera in front of the sun, 
boom, <laughs> you've got a really cool silhouette photograph. Sun equals silhouette. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I've made a video all about how to create cool silhouette photographs, which I will link to up here. Each of these triggers are related to natural light, but potentially the biggest and most important one, certainly when it comes to off-camera flash and creative portraits, is exposing for bright lights or bright objects. Now, bright objects can be virtually anything. For example, candles, lamps, fairy lights, <laughs> our friend the sun again. And when you see a bright light, Light, the trick is to train your eye to automatically try and see that scene underexposed. When you do that, even the most boring location can suddenly just come to life with creative potential. Training yourself to see the world underexposed is one of the absolute best pieces of advice that I can give you to help you to see the potential for creative off-camera flash portraits. When you do this, a whole world of creative possibilities open up. For example, it will be easy to see this scene as being <laughs> boring and pretty ugly, which it is to the human eye, but as soon as we expose the ceiling lights, which are the brightest part of the scene, the whole scene changes and we start to see the potential. It's just the same with this scene. This is just a boring corridor in a hotel, but when we expose for the bright lights on the wall, the full creative potential becomes much more obvious. Bright lights aren't always obvious, but at night they obviously exist just about everywhere. I mean, otherwise we'd just be walking around, bumping into stuff all the time. All we have to do is train ourselves to look at these scenes underexposed. Now, the only reason that they aren't always easy to see is because we have to remember that our human eyes have a much bigger dynamic range and we see the world in a far less contrasty way than our cameras do. So we need to start seeing the world as if we're a camera. Here's a less obvious example. The bright lights here are the small fairy lights, but by positioning my camera right up to the fairy lights and then lighting the couple with a speed light, because remember, when we expose for the bright things, everything else will become underexposed. This was the result. So the trigger here is bright light equals underexposed. So I hope this video has helped you to understand that by remembering these triggers, even though creativity can't really be taught, we can teach ourselves to remember what the creative options are. These are the most obvious and easy triggers that I can think of, but there are loads more. So if you would like me to make a follow-up video where I talk about other triggers, which I look for on a wedding day, please do let me know in the comments. As always, Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.